Hi, I'm Jessica Benson-Haver. I'm one of the surgical breast oncologists here at Henry Ford Health System. Lymph nodes are tiny little oval-shaped organs that are connected by lymph vessels that run alongside the blood vessels and filter the blood um, as it goes through the body back towards the heart. Um, lymph nodes are important in breast cancer because invasive breast cancer, by definition, means it has the potential to spread. It doesn't mean it has, it means it could. Uh, and if it has, it spreads through the lymph system. So for that reason, um, lymph nodes are important because we have to check them to see if the cancer has gone from the breast to the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes run along the blood vessels and their whole purpose is to filter and drain bacteria, foreign bodies, anything that is not supposed to be in the vessel system. Um, for that reason, after lymph node surgery, because you do remove some of the lymph nodes and you do um, cut some of those lymph vessels, uh, patients are at higher risk to get what we call soft tissue infections, cellulitis of the arm, and that's basically because you don't have that drainage um, as well as you did before. So the filtering system isn't um, quite as it was prior to the surgery. You'll often hear that we don't want patients to get needle sticks in that arm after they've had um, lymph node surgery. We don't want any potential introduction through those needle sticks into the blood vessel system, into the lymph system that's not quite up to par to draining it. Um, we'll hear that we don't uh, prefer for them not to have um, blood pressures drawn or done on the, the affected arm. Um, if patients get bug bites or bee stings, we want them to watch it closely, let us know if they have any redness that develops that would suggest that they're getting an infection so we can treat it with antibiotics. Um, that's the main sort of infection that you're at higher risk for after the lymph node surgery. A lot of patients think that, um, or worry, that having the lymph node surgery in one location puts them at higher risk for getting um, infections like the flu or the cold, and that's a misunderstanding. Having had um, lymph node surgery of the underarm does not increase your chances of getting sort of those systemic infections of, of a flu virus, a cold. Um, the biggest concern after lymph node surgery in regards to infection, again, is those potential soft tissue infections of the arm. The difference between sentinel lymph node biopsy and axillary lymph node dissection is the, the amount and the degree of dissection that's performed. Sentinel lymph node, by definition, is the first node that drains the breast. So the way that that is identified is through a procedure called lymph node mapping, where a very low dose radio tracer and or blue dye, um, either one or the other or both, is injected into the breast and it actually maps the lymph vessels to the axilla and shows us where exactly the first node or group of nodes is that drains the breast. It's usually one to three nodes that are considered the sentinel lymph nodes. Again, the first nodes that drain the breast. The reason that's important is because, again, breast cancer, if it spreads, it spreads through the lymph system. And if it does go that route, it's going to go to those sentinel nodes first. So in patients with um, breast cancer, we want to sample those nodes to see if they do indeed contain um, any cancer cells. Um, and if they do, then we have to decide at that point whether or not they need more axillary surgery, meaning more sampling, taking more of the lymph nodes. And that's when we get into what's called the axillary lymph node dissection. That's the full dissection as opposed to the sentinel lymph node, which is the sampling of those first nodes that drain the breast. The axillary lymph node dissection is an anatomic dissection, so it basically removes all of the lymph nodes in the first two of three levels of axillary nodes within the underarm. So there's the first nodes that you come to are what we consider level one, then it goes to level two, then it goes to level three. With breast cancer, if we decide that, they, that the patient does need that full dissection, um, the standard is to remove all of levels one and two of those lymph nodes. And the number of nodes can range from patient to patient. Um, some patients can have in both those levels as, as few as 20. Um, some can have as many as 40. Um, it's different from patient to patient.
a drain tube is left after the full axillary lymph node dissection. And the reason for that is um, the lymph vessels that connect the lymph nodes um, are usually cut during that process and they can leak. Um, despite all of our best efforts, there's always a little bit of what we call lymph leak. And if that's not drained, then it would collect in the underarm. Eventually that does slow to a stop um, and that's when the drain can come out. Usually that takes around seven to 10 days, depending on um, the patient, all patients are different. But um, that lymph leak itself oftentimes has to do with how big of a dissection you have to do. And um, just every patient is different on how long it takes that leak to stop. The drain tube itself is um, quite small. It's placed through a separate incision in the underarm outside of the actual incision for the surgery. Um, it's secured with a stitch so that it doesn't move in and out. Um, once it is ready to be pulled, that stitch is cut and the, the, the catheter itself is just slid right out of the underarm. So there's a lot of misconceptions about the ability of the arm after lymph node surgery. Uh, you will be able to use your arm. It's very important, however, that you allow the arm to heal, but also be proactive about um, exercises, um, range of motion, um, things to keep you from getting scarred, to keep from um, potentially inhibiting the ability to use the arm. Um, those are things that we like to be very um, proactive about making sure patients understand so that if they do get in a position where they feel like that's happening, that they know to contact us as soon as possible in order for us to be able to intervene, get them to therapy, and get them back to where they should be. However, you are working with lymph vessels, you are removing lymph nodes, and in that process it does create uh, the ability to scar, and it, that can be significant if, if you don't understand what's going on and aren't proactive about the healing process and um, doing the exercises necessary to maintain range of motion. One of the biggest concerns that a lot of patients have after lymph node surgery, either the sentinel lymph node or the axillary lymph node dissection, is the concern for what we call lymphedema, which is when the arm gets quite large and swollen. The reason that happens, again, is because you've interrupted the lymph flow. You've removed the lymph nodes, you've cut the lymph vessels, and so the arm and all the lymphatics in the arm from where you've done the intervention down has to learn how to redrain and reroute. And a lot of times you can get a back flow if indeed there is a lot more flow trying to come out that can make its way through where you've done the operation. It's much more of a risk with the full axillary lymph node dissection as opposed to the sentinel lymph node biopsy. However, there is a small risk with the sentinel lymph node biopsy itself for getting that arm swelling. It is treatable. Um, it is something that we can help take care of with therapy, with uh, lymphedema sleeves. All of our axillary lymph node dissection patients um, are fitted for a sleeve at some point, regardless of whether or not they do have lymphedema. It's more of a proactive practice. Um, it's also something that patients are at risk for lifelong. It's not just around the surgery. It's not just something that if you have it happen soon after the surgery, then you're gonna have it forever. If you don't have it, you're not gonna have it forever. It's something that can happen at any point, at any time after the surgery. So it's something to be aware of, to be proactive about for the rest of your life following the lymph node surgery. So one of the main treatments we use is um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and massage. It's basically helping to um, proactively push the lymph vessels, push the lymph um, system, and help to drain the arm. Um, there are also compression garments that we can wear to help keep that um, lymph fluid flowing as opposed to allowing it to just settle and continue collect and sort of create that backup and all that soft tissue swelling. Um, again, those are the compression garments, there's the sleeves, and there's a, a couple more, more aggressive type of techniques we can use if we need to. But usually most cases are well managed with um, just the lymphedema sleeves and then using um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, massage, um, lymph drainage as needed.